Hi everyone, so we're going to continue here um, and talk about our aphotic zone today. So we know that our photic zone is where we're going to see all of that sunlight. So our aphotic zone is going to be where we see um, our sunlight cannot penetrate through um, into that layer of the ocean. At the very top of our aphotic zone, we're going to have something called the twilight zone. And this is just a very little bit of light that's able to come through. That's why we kind of call it the twilight zone. We're going to see that no photosynthesis is going to occur here. So that means no producers or plants. So because of this, we're also not going to see as many consumers because we know that our producers are making the food. And if we don't have a lot of those, we're also not going to see as many of these consumers. Remember, 90% of all of our ocean life is going to live in that photic zone layer. So most of the food that comes to our aphotic layer are dead organisms that are sinking to the bottom of the ocean. So these animals that live here are going to feed off of these dead organisms. Temperatures are very, very cold here between negative 32 and negative 43 degrees Fahrenheit. So really, really cold. And about 300 pounds per square inch of pressure. So a very immense amount of pressure. So as we decrease in depth, we're also going to see a decrease in temperature and in pressure. So some adaptations that we're going to see with these animals, they're going to have very, very large eyes and because of that, large pupils as well. So when we adjust to the light, we notice that our pupils are going to open and close depending on how much light is available to us. So since these animals don't have a lot of light available to them, their pupils are going to be very large all the time to try to take in as much light as possible in these areas. Another adaptation that we'll see is that these eyes are going to be directed upwards to try to catch that light that's gleaming through, um, if any, in the water. We're also going to see a really large hinged mouth with very, very sharp teeth. So hinged mouth means they can open their mouth really wide. So when you can't really see your food, you need to have that large jaw to be able to catch it. And then we're also going to see vertical migration. So it allows them to stay in that same low light area at all times. So during the night, we're going to see them move up to the bottom of our photic zone to feed on organisms. And then during the day, they're going to move down to rest and digest their food. And this is going to help them protect themselves from predators and all these different things. So another really unique um, adaptation here is going to be photospores. So photospores are small flashing lights that are built in to the bottom of this fish here. This is going to be another really great adaptation for them to supply that light and be able to move through this very, very dark environment here. So a couple of organisms that we're going to see here are anglerfish, a gulper eel, giant squid, vampire squid, goblin shark, lanternfish, viperfish, dragonfish, lizardfish, fangtoothfish, and hatchetfish. These names probably don't sound very pleasant to the ear. That's because these animals have these super aggressive looking um, adaptations to them. So we're going to go through a bunch of pictures here to see what these animals look like in these depths of the ocean. Uh, another type of organism we're going to see are various types of shrimp. So shrimp are just these really tiny organisms um, that a lot of fish usually feed on. So let's take a look at some of these different organisms. So if we take a look here, look at all these different adaptations that this anglerfish has. This right here is kind of like a little photospore, gives a little bit of light. We're going to see our eyes here up towards the top of our head, very, very large pupils. And again, this very large mouth here that's able to expand even further 
um, to be able to catch the prey that they need. Again, seeing these eyes at the top, very, very large pupils, very, very large mouth here. This is our gulper eel. Our giant squid definitely lives up to its name here. Very, very large organism, again. Our vampire snake with our tentacles, they're kind of webbed over here, and we can also see the very sharp spines or teeth that go with our vampire squid. Our goblin shark, again, taking a look at our mouth here, very, very large to try to catch any prey that's in its path. Our lanternfish is definitely smaller here, but again, those photospores are going to be seen um, in great presence here. The viper fish, kind of the same thing, taking a look at these different um, photospores. And then again, we see, even though this is such a small fish, we still see a pretty large um, ability to open its mouth here with that hinge jaw. Again, more of these similar adaptations. All of these fish, though, if you haven't noticed, are pretty scary looking, um, which are pretty interesting to see. Again, here with some photo spores, that large, large mouth, our large mouth here again, and our hatchet fish, very small, but again, we'll see that once this mouth is open, it's a very, very large surface area in comparison to our fish that we see in our uh, photic zone. So some of these videos take you to some um, really interesting video clips if you want to uh, look at some more of these aphotic zone animals. Uh, so that's all we have for today. Let me know if you have any questions.